House to Home, presented by Remax Diamond Realty. I don't know about you guys, but I've been waiting for today's episode for seven whole days. I'm, I'm so glad it's Tuesday. I'm glad you're joining us out there in internet land and on TV land because the checklist is here. I have all of my items checked off. Liz and Gina are here from Remax Diamond Realty. You guys know the three of us. Let's get right to it. Gina, can I start building my house now? Because everything's already checked off. Well, you, you've you identified the funding source. You've selected a contractor. That's so that. now it's time. If you did not already have a vision in your head or a plan that you've put on paper, this is the time that you and your contractor can work out the details of a floor plan. Now, some people, if they don't have anything that they thought of in advance, then they sit with a contractor and say, you know, this is my budget. Uh, and of course, we talked about making sure that the funding for the utilities need to be thought of, or you have to have that saved on the side, or you work it out with a contractor, minus it from your total budget. I mean, you got to have to think about that. But now let's say you have 250000 and the contractor has already told you in advance because you've been interviewing contractors and they said, you know, for what you have in mind, uh, we're charging like 150 a foot. So now you could just tell your contractor, listen, I have 250,000 that I could use on the house and the land is already set up. The utilities are already set up or at least thought of, budgeted. So how much house can I get for 250,000? Is that so that's normal? Gina and Liz, is that normally the way that it goes? So I get everything squared off on the checklist and then I start envisioning what I want? Because I would think that, you know, plan your build, build your plan. And so I I already have like in my mind what I want to see, you know, like the big bay windows and doors and everything like that. And then after that, I would begin to go through all the steps. We recommend you follow the process that we started with. Okay. Because maybe planning something big, yes, go through the checklist. Because if you're planning something big, you know, one of the things we hate to see people heartbroken when mm. they find out my plans are so big, but then I cannot accommodate it based on my budget. So the best thing to do is follow the checklist and then go through the process. Because once you have an idea of your budget, you can discuss that with the contractor then the contract can tell contractor can tell you what what they can do for you. But again, he would be guided by your preference. How many bedrooms will your budget accommodate? And then the square footage, would it accommodate a two bedroom, a one bedroom or a three bedroom? And then there's so many details that go with construction, you know, the mm -hmm. size um what type of windows are you know the old days we used to have the louvered windows do you remember that oh yeah and then you turn we it, graduated yep. then we graduated into the sliding windows then we graduated into the french windows so each i'm still in the accordion i haven't graduated to french <laughs> that's right so each item on your on your wish list would would have to fit within the budget and then of course, are you going to have a carport? Because what people do sometimes when they realize their budget can only accommodate a two or a three bedroom, sometimes they just start there. And if you go around the island, sometimes you'll see people who build homes, but then they probably could not afford a, a carport or a garage. And then you'll see a um, canopied carport area. Or I'll just so park I, in the street or, you know. park in the street. But the yeah, critical okay. aspect of that is your budget and what can that get you? So there, there are a lot of details when you meet with your contractor and you may want to go see something that they have constructed because sometimes details, if, if you have a specific budget, they may tell you, I've already built a house with this budget and then go and see the home, see how it's laid out because that is one less hassle in terms of um, putting together floor plans for you. If they have it already in place, it makes it a lot easier. I've done that where I had a contractor build a home for me, but I didn't want to go through the construction or the uh, critical part of planning every phase, and it was a rental property. 
So he already had a floor plan that I liked. And I said, fine, build this. Mm -hmm. And here's my budget. And will it work? Again, I th this is this is mind blowing to me because this is kind of this runs counter to what I would assume the normal like mindset would be as because, um, again, you know, I, I, I like to use on the show, you know, the uh, the illustration of what if you got like a car loan and you guys have educated me and hopefully all of our viewers that getting a car loan is not the same as getting as putting up a house. Because if I was getting a car loan, I'd find the type of vehicle I want to get and then go to the bank and say, this is exactly what I want to get. In this case, you're saying I need the money first and I got to do all the infrastructural things, the utilities things, and then I can start thinking about it. Because I guess, you know, you're not building a car. Well, when you go, Jason, when you go to the bank, you have to bring your floor plans. They won't be able to do a construction loan for you unless you have your floor plans with you. And that's why we're saying follow the process right. okay. and you know, so you know your budget. And if you don't follow it, you go to the bank and it will set you back three to four months to put your floor plans together. You know but, what? I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a PowerPoint just for everybody out there watching. I'm gonna make a PowerPoint of all these checklists so you guys can download it like at home and you guys can follow along with Liz and Gina's pro tips. Seriously. We'll we'll have that and, in the show notes. And Jason, it is incredibly time consuming doing this. And you do have to be organized. And you really should follow the steps. And it's not to say that if you have a dream home already, actually, I think maybe four or five months ago, it might have been, my, no, I think it was about that time. Um, somebody we both know, Jace, I called and said, Gina, I actually have my plans. I'm ready to build. I've got my lot. Um, and he actually called to say, I'm looking at this house that you have listed. We're thinking of, um, so that was the beginning of the conversation. Um, I, you've got this property, it's got your sign on it. And I, I, I'm interested in looking at it. And I said, well, really, you, you're not building for yourself. And, and, and he said, well, I have my plans ready. I have my, my land ready. I just haven't been able to find a contractor that, that would build it. And some people, they have that squared away and their budget is flexible if your budget is flexible and you know your budget's flexible, then by all means, aim for your dream home. What we're saying is if you believe your budget's not flexible, if you know your budget's not flexible, maybe it's about the monthly. With me, it's always about the monthly. Mm. I don't want to pay more than X a month. Okay, that's my thing. And so if I know that's my budget, when I go to the bank, I'm going to say, Here's what I want to spend every month. So what can what can I get from you if that's all I want to pay every month? And as the interest rate goes up, now that amount's going to go down. Yeah. And so I have to be, so for me, my flexibility is going to be on my design of the home. Bear in mind, once you get a contractor and you design that home, you want to make changes, you will pay for the changes. And what we're advocating for is you saving money. We don't want you to waste money on things that if you just paused and gave it a little bit more thought right now, you don't have to pay to change things later. So that's why we're saying, if, you're, if you've got a fixed budget, whether it's, hey, I don't want to pay more than this a month, or I don't want to borrow more than this amount, you know, this amount from the bank, if your budget's fixed that way, then stick with this process. If you believe you've got flexibility, then design your dream home and then sit with a contractor, nail that down, get something in writing. The bank will need that contract to start the next phase, which is stay tuned next week. And we'll go over that. <laughs> Great. You should work in reality TV. OK, real quick before we go, Liz, how long does this phase take when you're going back and forth with the contractor and, you know, like finally nailing down? what the plan is. You know, when, when you're working with a contractor, sometimes it'll take three months because you're sitting with them, going with a design, uh, putting together a list. Of course, the time may be less if they've already got a similar design. I know when we were building, I talked to a number of different contractors and I said, hey, what plans do you have for this number of square footage? So we got like three or four plans from three different uh, contractors and then we kind of compared what did we like best, the open floor plan, what, you know, our style or, or what type of property layout that we liked. And uh, once we picked one, we tweaked it a bit. 
But then again, at the end, it turned out we saw a floor plan, uh, a house that a contractor built, and we liked exactly the way it was. So we said, build this one. And it was then the time frame for the design was less. Because even if you picked a home, then you still have to say, okay, what colors, uh, what type of fixtures, because mm -hmm. that could make or break the budget. All right. Okay. And it's all about like Gina said, it's all about saving you money. And Liz said, it's all about getting you exactly what you want to make sure that you're happy. And that's what we're trying to do on this show. So, okay. Next week, we're one step closer to pouring that concrete. I can't, I can't wait. So Liz, Gina, thank you as always. Thank, thank you, you. Jay. And remember guys, go, we'll, we'll put the link in for the PDF so you guys can actually download the, uh, the checklist and you know what, put a magnet up, put it on your fridge and everything. Follow along with us because you know, we, we stand by our word on this segment. So thank you very much, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, Jace. Right, see you next week, everybody.